Ashadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah Hayala suala Hayala suala Hayala al-fala Hayala al-fala Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah Inna alhamdulillah نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونسترشده ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا وعظيمنا محمد خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وصحابته المباركين الميامين وأتباع بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد إن نعم الله most gracious and most merciful we thank the Almighty Allah who gives us opportunity again to meet at this conducive place Alhamdulillah in our previous khutbah last week we talked about Surah Two Nas a brief summary and a brief reflection about Surah Two and Nas and we say that today's khutbah will be a continuation of what we started last week so Alhamdulillah the last very very uh, last two verses of Surah Al-Nas were talking about a very specific enemy known as Iblis or Shaytan and we actually promised that today we are going to give some um, recommendations if you like or guidelines on how to uh, safeguard and protect ourselves from this arc or worse enemy so the Almighty Allah actually is warning us like we explained earlier on about this enemy a shaitan and, and his mockery and his uh, methodologies. He's got so many methodologies. He's an expert <coughs> in this field. <laughs> but today we want to talk about this waswasa to a shaitan and evil or devil whispering. What do we mean by waswasa to a shaitan? The word waswasa uh, in Arabic, uh, contextual Arabic language, comes from the word waswasa, waswisu, waswasa, tell me, waswasa. That's the root of the verb. Now, simply it means means whispering, it means talking to somebody quietly. And this is what the shaitan, what the devil is doing. Ideally, because some people end up doing things unknowingly, without even unconsciously, without even knowing what they've done. And as soon as that uh, uh, particular atrocity, that particular action finishes, and that particular person comes back to normal, comes back to normality, say, wow, how did I get to do this? Yeah, because that was not him, that was waswasa to shaitan. It was a whisper. An evil whisper came from shaitan. And actually, the Quran told us everything, because Surah Al-Nas is a physical evidence to us. <coughs> and the Almighty Allah warned us previously. Eh? When he said, بعد أن أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الشيطان لكم عدو فاتخذوه عدوا إنما يدعو حزبه ليكون من أصحاب السعير إن الشيطان لكم عدو Verily, shaitan is your enemy فاتخذوه عدوا and make him to be your enemy. Okay, so fight against him. That's, that's, that's the implication of the verse. If you have an enemy, you need to know the techniques and, and you need to know what kind of weapons to hold to fight against your enemy. Okay, because if you don't know how to fight with the enemy, what's going to happen? You will be defeated. And to be defeated by shaitan is actually to lose our entire faith. So, what's um, wasa to shaitan, as we said earlier on, can happen the whisper from the devil can happen in so many things. It could be in form of the waswasa could be about some aspects of religion, for instance. Someone who might ask, who start asking some vague and, 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 and doubtless questions. 
Okay, so I believe in Islam. Does it really make sense to be a Muslim? Does it really make sense to have a God that you don't see? What kind of this religion? If you start asking these kind of uh, vague questions, you, you, you better talk to yourself and say, well, I need to scrutinize and assess myself now. What's happening in me? Because some, some of these vague questions come along sometimes in your mind. But that's not you. You should know that. That doesn't mean in Islam we are not allowed to ask. We actually in different uh, halakat, in different speeches, we've talked about <coughs> how even major prophets, they ask so many questions. Sayyidina Ibrahim, he asked so many questions. Sayyidina Musa, Sayyidina Musa, what did he ask? Rabbi Arini, Andur ilayk. Oh Allah, could you appear somewhere? Could you, you know, give me any kind of indication or form that I could see you? Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam wanted to see Allah. Rabbi Arini, Andur ilayk. And Allah said, Qala lam tarani. You can never see me. You can't see me. Walakin indur ilal jabal. Look at this certain mountain. Fa in istatarra makalahu fa sawfa tarani. If you see the way it is, you might. You see, Allah didn't say you will see me, definitely. But that doesn't mean that as Muslims we are not allowed to ask questions. Yes, we are allowed to, you know, Rabbi Arini Kaifa Tuhil Mauta, Sayyidina Ibrahim asked, Show me how do you give you know, life back to death? How do you revise people? Sayyidina Ibrahim asked this kind of question. So we are allowed, to, but there are some questions which are not human questions, these are devilish questions. And this is a whisper from Shaitan. How did I come to exist? How did I come to exist? Okay. So what is the origin of this God? Why do we actually have to worship Him? Who say that? Of course, Allah said in the Quran, Worship me, ana rabbukum al-a'la. Sorry. Innani ana Allah la ilaha illa ana fa'budni. Surah Al-Taha. So why do we have this kind of constant nagging evil thoughts and evil thing? This is what we call was was at the shaitan. So this whisper from shaitan, and it's good that our children are here today, could come in different forms. It could come actually in another form. Uh, the thoughts, uh, uh, it could actually come in actually in actual acts of worship. For instance, we know that in within the salah, or maybe you're, you're, you're fasting, you'll be praying here, but within your salah, you'll be thinking about evil things. And that is what's what's up to shaitan. Evil things. Did I put, did I put a, a ablution wudu or not? Was my ablution camping or not? Is it the first rak'ah or the second rak'ah? You see, because the devil, shaitan, is trying to play, to play up with us, with our mind, with our attitude. This is called what's what's up to shaitan. Is, is, am I purified or not? You know, when I, when I, when I, when I, when I come out of my house, did I take a ghusl, a, a, a ghusl? Did I clean myself? Am I purified or not? What's the sort of shaitan? It could be a fasting, for instance. You want to provide zakah, you want to provide charity. I don't think this, this particular person deserves this amount. Should I give him this type of amount? No, I think I'll do it tomorrow. What's the sort of shaitan? The whisper from the devil could come in different form. Not only that, <clears throat> it could be the constant negativity about other people. You see, the way we view about other people, I think I'm the only a, a, a righteous Muslim on earth. I think my methodology is the, the authentic methodology and the rest of the people are deviated from the proper path. This is what's what's to shaitan. We have some Muslims who think that way. You see, people, they don't even, even they don't even actually, what's the word? They, they don't even socialize with fellow Muslims simply because they believe their methodology, their way of belief, their way of life is better and the actual, it is the accurate way of worshipping Allah other than other people. So they will say, I will never go to that mo mosque. That mosque, oh my God, that mosque I will never go there because I want to go to my mosque whereby I trust the Imam and our mosque, we know our methodology is the right methodology, you see now? You've, you, as if you have, me and you have granted that paradise already to us. Well, you don't even know, you're not even sure whether you will get it or not. You, you will even smell the smell of paradise. We don't even know. May Allah make us among the people who will be actually dwelling and living in paradise. But this kind of waswasa, this kind of uh, 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 evil uh, uh, feelings, ideas and ideology, this is part, part of what the waswasa to a shaitan. Now, <coughs> how does it happen? How does waswasa to shaitan happen? How? Yeah, it happens in one particular formula. Because Allah told, told us in Surah, uh, in Quran that when, when the previous uh, prophets were preaching and reminding people about the, the message of Islam from darkness to light, these people who are actually worshipping their, you know, their objects and their idols and everything, they used to see what they used to do is the 
perfect and correct things. So what does what does the shaitan does? Tazeenu al-a'mal. Fazeena lahum al-shaytanu a'malahum. Quran says, Fazeena lahum al-shaytanu a'malahum. Shaitan beautifies and makes the bad thing. To me and you, you might think, oh, this is the good thing. And to other people say, oh my God, why is he doing that? Look at, look at child grooming, for instance. You see, in, in natural, in common sense, a human common sense, you wouldn't actually groom a, 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 a small child of maybe six, seven, nine, eight years old. In, in a new human nature, you don't think that way, right? But when shaitan kicks in, when the whisper of shaitan kicks in, you'll see a human being turns to animal, even more than animal. We turn so brutal, more than animal. You see someone is grooming someone who is like two, three, four years old. And you ask yourself, subhanallah, how does that happen? How does that actually happen? Because tazeenul a'mal, something nasty, something precarious, something really bad, shaitan make it to be the most beautiful thing on earth. <coughs> so now zina, zina if an omar is very, very nice to actually commit adultery to, to you know, other women that it could be your sister, it could be your cousins, it could be anybody. Someone's sister is your sister in Islam, isn't it? Stealing, stealing, uh, transgression, you name it, alcoholism, intoxication. In their actual sense, they are bad things and we know that. But when shaitan kicks in, when shaitan intervenes, tazeenul a'mal, tazeenul a'mal, he makes the worst nasty thing in front of you to look like they are the better thing. They are the most beautiful thing. Now, once, because we say the position of shaitan is where? Sudur, alladhi yushrufi suduri, the breast and the chest, this side, because he's there at the main compound. He's just waiting. He doesn't have the access to attack your heart until you indicate. You give him a signal. You know what? Come in now. The door is open. Now, when you open the door, shaitan kicks in. He comes in because he's there. He's always there. Fi sudur in nas, Allah says. The breast and the chest here. He's just waiting to attack. He's waiting to attack. Minal jinnati wal nas. And he's going to use his weapons. He's going to use fellow humans. He's going to use what? The jinns. He's going to use fellow humans. You will see the evil ideas come in. You know what? I think tonight let's go out. There's nothing about going out if you're going to do something else. I think today let's try something nice. This is holiday. This is vacation. Can we try something new? It's boring. It's all about, you know, staying at home, watching television, going to the community, the kids or us, young men or whatever. Let's try a new thing. You, would you like to go for an adventure? What kind of adventure is that? Trying something new. If you see a friend of yours, or a brother of yours, or whosoever it is, is telling you, giving you this kind of vague, malicious ideas, know for, for, for fact that that idea is not from that friend. That idea is a whisper from who? From shaitan. That is a whisper from shaitan. I call upon you to astaghfir Allah al-Azim and to give us the forgiveness of our sins and to give us the forgiveness الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين أحمده تعالى بما هو له أهل من الحمد يؤمن عليه وأؤمن به وأتوكل عليه أما بعد So what is the remedy, dear brothers and sisters, after knowing that we have an enemy and we know the methodologies and the techniques that this enemy uses, what is the remedy? What is the solution? Part of the solution is الوعي بمكائل الشيطان ووسائله is to understand, is to be alert and to be conscious about the enemy himself and the techniques that this enemy uses. Talking about it, educating ourselves about this particular enemy is part of the solution. Okay? If we are if we really know that we are hunted by we are hunted by this devil, so in our consciousness, in our mind we will always live consciously and vigilantly, knowing that if we misbehave, if we commit a tiny mistake this enemy will attack us, okay? And the way he attacks is really bad because when he attacks and he penetrates through the heart, that's it. We will turn to monsters. We will turn to do things that a human being normally wouldn't actually do. So that is, that is point number one. Not only that, al-istiqamatu ala ta'atillahi, steadfast, actually <coughs> embracing Islam wholeheartedly. This is it, without no doubt whatsoever. 
When Allah says about five times a day, pray five times a day, there shouldn't be any doubt. That's what we teach our, our children, al-aqeedah, undoubtless belief. If a woman says hijab is fard in Islam, we shouldn't, why then we should, we should wear hijab then? Covering ourselves all over our body. Yes, because it is a command from Allah. Why? Why is it should be a command from Allah? You don't ask those kind of questions because you know that obeying Allah is part of your responsibility. Okay? And some of the vague questions come from the whisper of shaitan. Not only that. Al-hifab ala al-fara'id wal min al nawafil Part of the solution is for us actually to be committed to al-fara'id. <coughs> things which are obligatory to us and we should do actually extra. al nawafil Okay? What's going to happen to a student who is always diligent to his master, to his teacher, who always, you know, Come, you know, goes to school on time, he always does the homework, although he has some weaknesses, okay? You know, he has some weaknesses, perhaps he doesn't, you know, pass a uh, full like 100 over 100, or maybe 80 over 100, but this particular student is so diligent, he has so much effort, what's going to happen? He does extra, perhaps he remains at school after, you know, after school, he shows the teacher that he wants to understand, although he has some problems, some difficulties, what's going to happen? Even the teacher will be lenient to the student. That's a common sense, it's an example. Okay, the school won't fail that particular student if they see the effort and everything. Likewise to Allah. If we do the al faraid the obligatory part, the prayers, the, the zakah, shahada, no doubt whatsoever, and we try to exceed it with some extras, Allah will always be lenient to us. Allah says, Wa inni la ghaffarun. And why not? Wa inni la ghaffarun liman taba wa amana wa amila salihan thumma tada. And the most, I am the most forgiving. Of course, he knows that we will always commit sins and evil. So the paradise is not there for us just because we are Muslims. No, because we make effort. We ask for it first. We make effort and we show Allah we are not perfect. We will always keep on doing mistakes and evil and everything. But we are here for you. We are doing our lovely best. We are doing our best. And Allah is up to him to grant a paradise to us. Oh no, we can never ask that question. Why? Why didn't Allah give you that? Is part of the whisper of shaitan. You can't ask the, the Almighty Allah why. Allah says in Surah Al-Anbiya, La yus'alu amma yaf'alu. La yus'alu. Allah is not being questioned and nobody has the right to ask Allah, why did you create me a man? Why did you create me to be a woman? Why did you make me born in England? And not in Brazil and not in Zanzibar, not in India. Why? What kind of vague, silly questions are here? Are these? But this comes from who? From shaitan. Part of the solution, al-ikthāru min al-du'āi wal-tasbihi wal-istighfār. Seeking refuge and seeking uh, protection from Allah wholeheartedly and on daily basis. On daily basis. You see, we have adhkār, we have these supplications, on each and everything. When we wake up in the morning, what do we say? In the way we begin our day in Islam, we have been taught by our beloved Prophet ﷺ on how to begin our day. How to spend our day. How to go to bed. How to eat. Bismika Allahumma amutu wa ahla. Before, before you, even, you even sleep, you say, in the name of Allah, amutu wa ahla. I die. The, 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 the meaning of the word amutu means I die. When you sleep, literally means you are dying. You don't know anything. You don't know what's going to happen to you. You have no guarantee that you're going to wake up tomorrow, next day. So you say, Oh Allah, I put my body and my soul to your hands. I die now, which means I want to take rest now. And in your name, if you give me back the second ticket of coming back to, to, to life, I want to I want to come back to life in your name. That's what you say, Ismika Allah. In your name, Allah, I rest now, I die, and perhaps I will get the second chance of waking up tomorrow morning. There you go. You sleep, what do you do? Al Istiada. We say we have an act, uh, we have a worse enemy here who is hunting us all, ar all around us. What do you do? You seek protection. That's what the Prophet used to say to do. That's what he used to do. Surah Al Ikhlas three times, Surah Al Farah three times, Surah Al Nas three times. A massive protection, a very, very big protection to us. Even if Allah, uh, even if Shaitan wants to send a, a fellow human to actually, you know, to, to, to corrupt us, to use his whispering, but if you have a strong weapon, if you have strong protection, that shaitan, it won't be easy for him to attack. Yes, because he doesn't have the axe, he doesn't own us, he is a creature. إِنَّهُ لَيْسَ لَهُ سُلْطَانٌ Allah says in the Quran, إِنَّهُ لَيْسَ لَهُ سُلْطَانٌ عَلَى الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ He has no power 
he has no authority to who? Ala ladina amanu, the true believers. Not ala ladina aslamu. Just because you were born Muslim, I'm Abdul Karim, I'm Sabri, I'm Muhammad, Aisha, Salma, Fawzi. No. Ala ladina amanu. Remember the meaning of faith. The belief and we need action. Innahu laysa lahu sultan. Allah says, declared openly. He has no power, no authority at all. And himself, he confesses and says, Inna ibadi laysa laka alayhim sultan. Allah says to him, Inna ibadi, my true slaves, my true believers, laysa laka alayhim sultan. You have no power to them. No. You will delude and corrupt some of them. The ones that, the people, the people that give access, they open the doors to you, definitely you can attack them. But the ones that actually believe in me and they put their faith into action, you have no access to them and you have no authority. So part of the strongest weapon that we have to actually fight and combat and, and fight against this devil, this shaitan, is seeking protection from Allah abundantly. And, uh, and the very last point, الصحبه النافعه الطيبه الصحبه النافعه الطيبه ان المحافظه على تلاوه القران القران is a protection whenever we go we have to take quran with us that doesn't mean we have to carry books you have to carry you know must have everywhere in the toilet no you could have a mobile quran which means you have to memorize quran memorizing quran is like making yourself your mobile person your mobile quran that's it not only that الصحبه النافعه we have to be selective when it comes to friends and relationships. Yet yeah, because we say min al jinnati wal nas part of the weapons he uses people and friends. So you cannot tell me, oh I can just take anyone out there, I'll just make him to be my friend. No, Islam doesn't say that. That particular friend could actually turn you to be a nasty person, a monster. Okay? And that doesn't mean Islam segregates other people. No. Whether he's Christian, he's Jew, he's whatever Hindu, he is a, is, a, is an atheist. As long as he's a good person you can deal with him. That's fine. But here, particularly, we're talking about having, having a role model, having someone that you call a companion, a best friend. If a best friend plays gamble, he or she will definitely persuade me and you or try to influence you in one way or the other to like gambling. <laughs> and you will find yourself, me or you, will find ourselves from nowhere. You know what? It is haram, but it's okay. I don't play it. But I can go there. You see, that's, that's the khutuwat you say about that's how you start doing it. You start tolerating the evil, step by step. You start going there and saying, but I don't play. I know it's haram. It's okay, but that's none of my business. It's my best friend anyway. It's none of my business. I'm just there to support him as a friend. Oh, there you go. Start your support as a friend. Later on, you're going to tolerate that and later on you're going to say, oh. But you know what? He's going to try and convince. It's not him. It is shaitan. It is the whisper from shaitan. Tell him, how can you actually abandon or deny something that you never tried. <laughs> so many times people ask me this question. How you guys Muslim, everything is haram to you, but you've never tried. You've never tried alcohol. Why do you actually come to conclusion, come to know that alcohol is bad to you? So try it first. I say, oh my God, this is another devil in form of human. That's it. Somebody is convincing you, telling you you need to try it first before, before knowing whether it's good or bad. May Allah protect us from the devil. May Allah protect us and our generation and give us the strong weapons. أقول هذا وصل وسلم على إمام المرسلين وقائد الغر المحجرين فقد أمركم الله بالصلاة والسلام عليه في محكم كتابه حيث قال عز قائلا عليما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم في العالمين انك حميد مجيد وارض اللهم عن خلفائه الراشدين وعن ازواجه امهات المؤمنين وعن سائر الصحابه اجمعين وعنا معهم برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين واذل الشرك والمشركين واقطع دابر اعداء الدين اللهم اغفر المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الاحياء منهم والاموات انك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات عباد الله ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم 
واشكروه على نعمه يزلكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله أعلم ما تصنعون وأقل السلام